Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to season eight of Gather for Her. I'm Tina O, and I'm grateful to be connecting with all of you here from Nequelaquam, also known as Bowen Island here in BC, Canada, on the soil originally named as Turtle Island, now known as the continent of North America. And I'm grateful to rest my head, to play and co-create on the traditional unceded ancestral territories, land and home to the Squamish people. Gather for Her, this is what we're in today, invites you to be part of our co-created conversation with global leaders, change makers, and social impactors. And it's brought to you by Powerhouse and produced by Regen Media. At Powerhouse, we walk beside leaders to amplify their change work as they walk their path of whole leadership, guided by conscious leadership practices and indigenous ways of knowing and being. Our impact media producer is Regen Media, who invites us to take the power of media into our own hands by supporting stories that heal, generate, uplift, and transform. And every two weeks, we are here, live here on LinkedIn, followed by a private interactive wisdom circle held on the leader path in the house that is Powerhouse. But I'll tell you more about that later as I'm going to pop in a few times in this hour and introduce you to a few of the things that we have going on in the house that will likely be of interest to you. This is a live conversation, and we'd love it if you would introduce yourself as a listener or a viewer in the chat. You can say hello here on LinkedIn and let us know where you're connecting in from and with an acknowledgement of gratitude for the lands in which you rest, play, and grow. Reconciliation in action begins with awareness, followed by a practice, and then is carried forward for future generations with an integrated knowing you can be awkward here and learn here. You can come as you are here and learn with us as we all practice softening and growing and co-creating this world that we're living into together. So let's begin. I'm excited. I'm going to pass to my sisters in change making and let them introduce themselves. And then we'll introduce our special guest for you today. So over to you, Shar. Good morning. Good morning and welcome. It's my pleasure to host and welcome you from my home on the Sunshine Coast on the west coast of Canada. And uh, I'm grateful to live, work and play on the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of the Squamish people. I am very excited for today's conversation and to help touch uh, the conversation with, with your energy. I'm going to pass over to you, Christina. Thank you, Char. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Christina Benti, and I am joining you today from the Rocky Mountains. And uh, my community in Golden, BC, is also the traditional territory of the Tanaha and the Shuswap peoples, and home of the Columbia River Métis. So I'm I'm quite excited about this season of conversations around whole leadership and what that that means and because it feeds right into my work in the world in powerhouse um, do curriculum development for for leaders and coaching and uh, and also you know my mission to bring a wiser kinder more conscious uh, environment particularly in government for for organizations uh, so these conversations just feed my soul. So I'm very excited about, uh, about this and uh, pass over to uh, my, my dear soul sister, Sharon. Thank you, Christina. And welcome everyone. Um, my name is Sharon Marshall and uh, I am founder and uh, lead executive officer of Diva Training and Staffing Solutions. And I, wo I work very closely with uh, Regen uh, Media and um, Powerhouse um, as one of the braid and one of the uh, co-founders, co one of the co-hosts of Gather. <laughs> and I'm also an Amplify auntie. Uh, and I'm thrilled to be a part of this conversation. I'm coming to you today from the traditional ancestral and unceded territories of the Snanemu and Sanawas uh, uh, nations um, here on Vancouver Island. And uh, welcome back to you, Shar. It's my pleasure to welcome our guest this morning. I want to tell you just a little bit about, um, from my heart, uh, a little bit about Brenda McIntyre, a uh, sister coming 
uh, to have a conversation with us this morning and just knowing that she is in our circle um, just kind of warms my heart. Brenda is an amazing healer, uh, uh, artist, um, and I'm going to say um, supporter of Indigenous sisters across Turtle Island and beyond. Um, what I know about Brenda is she is an amazing at holding space. Um, and she does so um, in so many ways. Um, the powerhouse community knows Brenda primarily because we've been fortunate enough to actually incorporate, um, integrate her music as medicine, her songs as medicine into our events. And um, I always say that we need to open our hearts before we can open our minds. And I'm, I'm just so grateful um, to welcome Brenda. I'm just gonna tell you just a little bit about her and then I'm gonna pass it over, over to her. Um, known by her indigenous name, uh, Medicine Song Woman, I need to let you know that Brenda's signature, her, her gifts that are so alive in the world come to us in the form of concerts, circles and private sessions and they allow us to you know and invite us to dig deeper into the potential and potent spontaneous healing that occurs through soundscapes sometimes i think we forget how important sound is to our spirits um, her keynotes her workshop and picking up the pieces which is a 13 moon resilience and reawakening program, help indigenous um, as well as empaths to, to heal and to move forward and ahead. There's so much more I could tell you about Brenda, but I will say that she has shared her melodic uh, mesmerizing voice and healing music, spiritual teachings with audiences of 30 to 3,000 across Turtle Island and far beyond. Um, Brenda, welcome. Thank you for being here. And I just want to hand you <laughs> the talking stick to tell us a little bit more about you. Um, miigwetche, hi, thank you. Um, Shar and everybody, I'm, I'm so happy to be here. This is wonderful. And uh, thank you for having me. Um, I'm coming to you right now from a part of London that is on Upper Canada Treaty 2 territory, um, as well as just with one spoon Covenant Wampum. Uh, the lands of London, Ontario are the territory of the Anishinaabek, uh, Lenape, Haudenosaunee, Wendat, and uh, Adewandaran, also known as the Chinunktan peoples. And uh, my myself, I'm uh, kind of community lists in a way because I'm a 60 scoop survivor and still on that journey. I just know I'm a mixed blooded Cree woman. Um, and I was born in Calgary and uh, raised mostly in BC. And now I'm here in this beautiful forest city. <laughs> beautiful. Thank you, Brenda. I want you to know how much I enjoyed our conversation before we even got here. Um, I love the stillness that you hold. I really enjoy, I feel nourished when I'm just around you. And this must be what Charlene talks about, about your way of holding space. I just wanted you to know, even though I was in my car that day that we were chatting, yeah. I, I felt really at home with you. Like I wasn't in my car. So I'm just grateful you're here. And why don't we open up with our first question? which is around whole leadership. That's what we're exploring uh, in this season. I'm just curious, what does whole leadership mean to you? Yeah, that I love that question. At first I was like, what does that really mean? <laughs> what does that mean for me? Um, and, and really when I think about it, it's like me being as whole a being as I can and coming to my work, my life, um, from that place of being whole of you know nothing's missing nothing's wrong with me which is something that a lot of us women myself included can struggle with um and just you know i'm coming to it as a whole being and that means mind body spirit and heart 
you know, it means coming with my breath as well as my heart. Just um, those are those are our source of life. And um, and the water wants me to speak for the water, too. And it's like, yeah, we're water carriers. So I always, always, always have my glass of water with me. Um, and I'm praying and singing for the water all the time. So, I mean, that's kind of, you know, I come, I come from that place of, of wholeness of just um, not with, not just even within myself, but understanding that that's also true for you. That's also true for all of you and everyone in the audience that we all have that wholeness. We just got to access it, come back to it, come home to ourselves. Yeah. Mm, thank you. I, I have a sense that Shar has lots to say about this. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> I, I, what I'd love to just dig, yes, thank you for passing to me. Um, what I'd love to dig into for a minute, uh, Brenda, is, is what you said about coming home, because that's the journey I'm on. And I think that the journey that we're all on is coming, approaching whole leadership as just acknowledging it, that it's our, our return to our, our full spirit and our whole spirit. It's our return to spirit. And, you know, to have that conversation on, on LinkedIn, you know, and some people are going to be a little, like a little like, uh, but honestly, like we know that the most important role for leaders, if you're alive and breathing in this generation, our number one role is to heal. And, um, I just wanted to thank you for bringing up that coming home. And I just wondered where that takes you in your work as a medicine woman through all the modalities you utilize to, to this. It's just such important. There is no more important work to me right now than the work that you do. Hmm. Miigwech. Um, yeah, you know, Elder, grand, grandmother uh, Joanne Dallaire comes to mind. Um, she's the elder. She's like my go-to elder um, in Toronto. And she said that um, a long time ago, I remember her telling, telling a group of us that we are the only beings on the planet, human beings are the only ones on the planet who have forgotten our original instructions. Yeah. And so I've, I've always, I've taken that to heart and, and it really rung true because we have, and you see most most people um, kind of, I don't know, like the, the practice I have comes from the breath, comes from the voice, comes from song, but it's it's about being present in our bodies. And we, if we can't be present in our bodies, then how the heck can we come home to ourselves, right? So, so I, I've been practicing that for myself and just, you know, uh, trying to stay as grounded as I can. Um, but also remembering who I am. And as I was saying too, I mean, I'm a 60 scoop survivor. I don't even know all about who I am. I only know a little bit. So, but at the same time, what, because of having that experience of, um, of all my life, not knowing physically who I am, I came to a place where I had to go to spirit. That was the only option. <laughs> that was all there is. It's like, well, I'm here. And then who am I? If I don't know all of those sort of affiliations or the things that I would say about physically who I am and where I come from and all those things, then, then who am I? And I've been really spiritually connected ever since I was a kid. I just didn't, you know, we're kids. We don't call it that. We're just living as kids. We are who we are. And uh, I, you know, my solace was always going up into the hills in Kamloops. That's where mo mostly where I spent my growing up years, right up against the sagebrush covered hills. And that's where I was home. And so I have some of that sagebrush here on my desk all the time. I like even when I'm almost going to run out, I will be almost running out for like a year because I'm not going to run out because I will smell that and it brings me alive. It brings me home. And I didn't know when I was growing up because I did not know that I was indigenous. I was told that I was white. So I didn't even know the medicine of that sagebrush was, was calling me home. Yeah. So I, you know, so here I am. And 
years later, but that sagebrush still will bring me back home to to who I am um, as as a spiritual being, just just being me. So, <laughs> yeah, the playful child in the hills, the singer, all of it. Yeah. I can smell the sagebrush the way that you <laughs> you speak of it. Um, I have a thought, but I'm just curious um, if Sharon or Christina has anything that's jumping up for them. Um, sure. Thanks, Tina. Um, so um, what came to my mind uh, when you mentioned uh, you, you went, went to spirit because you didn't know where else to go. Um, and and, and uh, there are similar, uh, there are aspects of your story that are similar to, to mine. And um, I just wanted to, um, talk a little bit of, I don't know, the synchro, not synchronicities, but uh, I guess a spirit, spirituality and, and how that has helped you through your life, like going to spirit. Um, I think of the synchronicities as, as one way of, of me knowing when uh, I'm on the right path or when, when things are aligned. And, and an example, a very, very good example of that um, is uh, in our last fire circle that we had, where we we um, were fortunate enough to have two of your songs, and and what what's so what was so magnificent and and beautiful about that for me, um, it, and it still makes me want to cry almost. Is, is like it just brings up so much um, emotion. Is the, the, both of those songs were perfect for what. W- they, it was just like they were just laid out right there, just like like there was no they they were just there. Like Creator just gave them to us, right? Like, and that was together we stand up. I mean, our our theme was um, uh, one family, you know. Together we stand up, and then the other one was amazing, and 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 yes, they were both amazing. And so, just to me, that was divine intervention. That happened. We needed that. That happened perfectly. And so I'm just curious um, about how you see these synchronicities playing out, how spirit comes to you and, 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 and so that you know that you're on uh, the, the right path, that, you're, that you feel that you're, because you don't have, we don't have an instruction book. We don't know where we're going. <laughs> and we yeah. have forgotten the, the original instructions, so. Yeah, it's like we have to have our DIY kit for ourselves. <laughs> That's um thank you for that question. Um yeah, you know, like since I was a child, um the when I moved to Kamloops, I got beat up the first day of school. So I was there in the summer and everything was going pretty well. Um mostly hanging out in the hills. I'm I was always shy, still am. Um was very was painfully shy though and introverted. And so I just like had maybe one or two friends, went to school, got beat up. It was awful. Um, I'm not glazing over it. But the point of the whole of that story, though, is that that brought me um, something that came back to me later on in my 30s when I was just finding myself, which was that um, the following day I went to school and I had a vision that carried forward every single day when I walked the hill to and from school. Um, So for nine months, I had that vision every school day. Um, And it was just a very simple vision. It was a spiritual symbol for myself. And, And the interesting thing is actually, too, when I do healing sessions for people, when I work with someone over time, that symbol for them is going to appear at some point. And I'll, and I'll be able to share with them what that is because we all have one. And I didn't know what that was. I was like seven. <laughs> I'm like, what is that? And I'm like, can everyone else see it? Cause I saw it right here on my forehead. <laughs> and I, it felt like it was there and I had to look in the mirror to make sure it wasn't. <laughs> um, and kept seeing it and seeing it. I, and I, wrote things about it and I was like what is this what does it mean right I knew it was important even at that age and then I forgot after it stopped happening but then in the in my 30s it came back to me and I realized um 
I mean, it came back to me in such a like, ah, kind of way to like, go to a crystal store, right? Because I love crystals and uh, gemstones and yeah, just minerals. Um, and so I went in and, and I, as soon as I get in the doorway, there's this giant quartz crystal and right in the middle of the quartz crystal, it's like this big, you know, right in the middle of it is my symbol. And I, and I, it just hit me, right? I'm like, what? Like, I forgot about it. I'm like, how did I forget about that? But then it was like, wait, it's back. Like, what? <laughs> this is amazing, right? And I couldn't even, I was broke. I didn't have the money to buy the crystal. And I said, okay, well, if that is meant to come home with me, then it will. But if not, that's fine. But that brought me home because that brought me into, like, I had to paint the symbol. I had to paint I don't know how many paintings came out of that, drawings came out of that, songs came out of that. That song Amazing came out of that <laughs> um, for the Spirit Connection album. And that Spirit Connection whole album and the teachings and a course, all of that came out of that. And it just sort of exploded out of itself after I saw that crystal and went to Native uh, Women's Resource Center of Toronto to my little painting class, art class, where they were just basically letting ourselves be kids and paint the way we want to paint. And I painted the most amazing painting that I will never sell. <laughs> and and it, that was based on that symbol. And, you know, and that my elder, even Joanne, mentioned her again, even told me in one of the readings I had with her, one of the sessions, um, that there was a certain kind of symbol that if I put it on my my work, it was going to help it, it sell, like for my business. And so uh, that became part of my logo for a time. And it was on all my CDs for a while there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it, it has guided me and still does and has brought me so many teachings. So that literally, like, brought me home. Yeah. It's just spirit interve intervening, going, you know what, you're going to be okay. Yeah. Mm. Oh, there's so much there. Christina, I'm going to pass to you in a sec, but there might be new people joining us and I just want to welcome them. Um, yeah. If you are just finding us here, here on LinkedIn, you've just dropped into a profoundly beautiful conversation with Brenda McIntyre. This is Gather for Her. It's a co-created conversation that we offer to global leaders, change makers, and social impactors. And it's brought to you here by Powerhouse and produced by Regen Media. We want you to know that you've just landed here, but you can join us every two weeks here live on LinkedIn. And then you can also join us on our wisdom circles that you are invited to be there where we unpack and harvest the wisdom that's already happening in this conversation. And we unpack these conversations on the leader path, which is powerhouse's community of practice for whole conscious leaders who are walking a bridged path of Western leadership practices and indigenous ways of knowing and being. The leader path, just to help you understand what that's about, you can find out more about it by going to powerhouse.com. You can sign up for a 30 day free trial so you can join us on these in these wisdom circles. And after that, the Leader Path is a $99 per month leadership gym that's designed to accelerate your resilience, restore your well-being, and amplify your impact as you walk your own path of Indigenous ways of knowing and being and learn how to embody what it means to you to be a good ancestor and make decisions through a seven-generational lens. Gather for Her is a live conversation. So again, if you're just joining us, you please comment, make a comment. We will answer them. Uh, let us know where you're at in your life right now in this moment in history that we are living into co-creating right now. All right, let's go back to this conversation over to you, Christina, and this conversation with Brenda McIntyre. Thank you, Tina. One of the things that actually Tina says quite often is, um, that the most important things are said in the first five minutes and that we, uh, we spend the last hour unpacking them. <laughs> and you know what? I was just like, Oh my gosh. When you said there's nothing wrong with us, there's nothing wrong with me. And uh, I, it's just that we forgot. I forgot. We forgot. We forgot who we are. And, and what I heard you saying about how ceremony song sage, 
um, uh, your, the symbol, the painting, that that's actually how we remember. And so we don't, we don't need fixing. Um, we just, healing's remembering. And, and, and you have talked about the ways that the ways you remember that lead to your healing, right? That those are, that those are anchors. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious about other, other parts of ceremony that, um, that, that you can share with us. <laughs> Where do I begin? <laughs> My life is ceremony. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I mean, I started to think of it that way and just live my life that way, that life really is ceremony. Um, yeah, I feel uh, like there. that's that's how I connect. Um, but really, everything for me comes from song, like everything comes from song. You know, like when I was when I was in my 20s, I used to I was, I've been songwriting and been a professional singer since I was 19, um, maybe 17. I guess that was my first sort of stage thing. But, but, you know, like, it wasn't coming from the place it does now. It wasn't coming from that place of ceremony. It was coming from a place of I'm just going to sit down and write uh, some songs, right? Oh, what rhymes with that? Like, I was just writing songs. And then I was just performing. And this is why, too, I don't, like, I have tried the music industry and woven in, woven back out, woven in, <laughs> woven back out. And it's like, no, it's not ceremony. And that's why I don't belong there. That's why. That's not my place. My place is where there's ceremony going on. And for me, I can sing, but it's not performing. <laughs> I'll use that word sometimes, like, so people know what I'm talking about. But I'm not performing, right? I'm being here. I'm being myself. I'm sharing from my heart and spirit and from a grounded place. And I'm open I'm open. And so I might not know what's going to come through. I don't, that's one of the things that I guess um, spirit gifted me was uh, the ability to just channel song in the moment. And so that's what I spend most of my time doing when I'm singing. I'm not, I hardly ever sing except for in my program and my picking up the pieces program is based on the songs. So I am singing those songs live for my students, but other than that, I'm channeling. And, uh, you know, every new moon, that's what we do. I, I channel song so that I can receive. And, and I receive the song and then I receive the information. I receive the connection first, though. And what I will also say, I guess, and then I'm going to leave it there, is in order to get to that place, I need to be here in my body and I need to listen, not just with my ears, but with my entire body being. I need to listen. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for that. I, because what you're describing to me is that whole, the, the nature of, you know, we often use the word co-creation, right? And what does co-creation mean? <laughs> and what does co-generation mean? And it means listening, like you said, for the spirit to flow through you. And that is, that's really powerful. I thank you for that. I'm, I'm actually curious where, where, where Tina would go with that. The idea of, <laughs> right? Like artistry, um, the, the power of, of artistry to heal in the act of co-creation. Mm -hmm. um, I just had a flash in my mind, like, oh yeah, we're on LinkedIn. <laughs> And then I love it even more. I love it even more. Um, something that I used to say a lot um, is listen so as to lead. And, um, you know, Brenda, you and I uh, have a similar, oh, you've been at it way longer than I am. I have so much to learn from you. Um, but it's a similar conviction or devotion, I would say. Um, which is dropping the performer. And for me, I'm still dropping mine. I, I'm still dropping my performer. I'm still, I love her. I'm aware of her. I, I, I enjoy her when that's the gig, but my own work in the world um, is less of that and living in the in-between space of, of stories. And um, 
I'm really curious how, what you can offer our listeners today who may be coming from a, a, a business perspective, which is also life, but um, around that listening so as to lead, because I think of leading as creating. Um, I'm curious, yeah, what can you offer us to learn how to do that for those who may not understand what we're even talking about? Listening so as to lead. <laughs> True. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I would say to that, the first, um, I mean, it starts with breath, I guess, really. So if we're going to, if we're going to be present, we need to be breathing, right? But most of us are breathing up here. We're breathing into our heads. We're breathing into our up here, upper, upper, upper chest which creates more anxiety and more disconnection and more blah, 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 blah. That's going on up in what I call anxiety land. Um, and what my, what someone else has taught me is actually the middle brain. And when we're living there, there's no access to real thinking. There's access to programmed thinking. That's about it. So for us to be present and to be able to, um, to lead, we need to be able to be grounded and to be grounded, you need to breathe. And you need to breathe into your belly. <sighs> into your belly and not up here. Because <laughs> what that when you breathe into your belly, it literally cuts you off from anxiety land. Where did that go? And then all of a sudden you're in your body and you have access to your intuition, right? To your knowings. You have access to your body and to kind of understand what's happening. So that's what I mean by listening too, because then you're listening from your whole self. So when you're talking about whole leadership, it's like, yeah, you're your whole self, you're listening. It's like all of you is listening, not just your ears. And then you're picking up so much more from what's going on in a situation that you can quickly deescalate something. Um, I don't know rise to a challenge, say exactly what's needed in the moment with confidence, but without aggression, without, you know, thinking that you need to impose anything or try to fix anything. You're just here. And when you're listening to that degree, then you know what to say because the words will come right away. Yeah, in that space that you're talking about, the in-between space. <laughs> That's where I love to live too. You're right about that. <laughs> and and I, ju I just want to add, and because Tina made a sort of a chuckle about the fact that we're linked in, what you just said about the breath, that it is the access to your calm, non-anxious presence, like that deep breathing, that is like that is steeped in knowing and wisdom, and it's steeped in research. <laughs> they coexist together. That's that's the art and the science of leadership is, like you said, accessing your wisest in intuition. And it your first place of entry is through the breath. And so for those listening, check your check yourself. How, how often do you check just chest breathe? And I love what you said about just breathing in our head, right? We spend so much time in here when when actually um, our, our, there's su such a power in the gut level knowing. And like I said, steeped in research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, I think one of the, the, the when I listen to your 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 message this morning, Brenda, what comes up for me, and, and it's not that we're discounting using our brains, and you know we're not discounting academic learning, but I also think okay, like great done, like full full on that level. So what what we've already been paying attention to that we've got that licked. Now it's where, where might we want to lean into that maybe we haven't been paying enough attention to. And that to me is part of coming home. That to me is part of coming home is not just a destination. It is also the realization of what it might feel to 
feel more fully alive every day, every day, a little bit more fully alive. And when you're talking about how you don't feel like you fit, you know, into the music industry, I didn't feel like I totally fit in the corporate world when I left in 2000. When you left the music industry, it, it, for me, it's, your gifts are beyond entertainment. They, they lift beyond entertainment and you follow that. Um, when I listen to music and, and your music for sure, I can move beyond even what you say and just connect from there. You know, like you, you put anyone, I don't care who they are in a room and we, we shut our brains off for a second and we just open our hearts and it moves you, right? Like sometimes it moves you and like, but, but it really like it moves you. <laughs> I just start crying immediately when I, you know, cause, and so I, I know that I still have, you know, a lot of, of work to do and clear, but, um, the, the question I have for you is actually one that is around um, something that we've been told around powerhouse. And I'm just really curious um, because I don't know a lot about the practice and ceremony of drumming. And, um, but yet instinctually, I feel like I do. Like, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about um, the practice of drumming and it, it's such a clear call to people, to folks um, beyond words, like the rhythm of drumming, the steady beat of drumming to me um, goes beyond any language barriers or any like it. And so I'm, I'm kind of fascinated. I'm kind of fascinated as a non drummer about drumming. And I, I wondered if you could just chat about that for, for a little bit. Yeah, sure. But first I need to address what you said about the tears because that's beautiful. And I want to also let you all know that, yeah, sometimes you'll have tears um, from drumming because it brings you into that, that place where you can get vulnerable and open and release some things. But you also might be getting spirit tears. That's what I like to call them anyways, where it's not even about sadness at all. And it's not even like happy tears. It's just, it's these different, I, I get this all the time when I'm really connected, I'll get these, these tears just come and I feel nothing but joy and connection. Yeah. And, and that's what I feel when I drum too. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I can't talk about drum like without having drum. So <laughs> So I have to, um, because I was just teaching about this, teaching my students about this, um, we did the heartbeat rhythm. And some people will call it the double beat, but I know you all know why I would call it the, the heartbeat rhythm, right? It's, it, it's the heartbeat. And, and the drum is really known as, it connects us to our own heartbeat, but also to the heartbeat of Mother Earth. And literally every culture that has a drum, and almost every one of them does, except for New Zealand, where they don't have the materials to make one, like naturally, they didn't occur, you know, eons ago. So, um, but what that drum is about is that connection and communication. Yeah, and and it reminds us of our heart. It's every everywhere you go, you're going to hear the same thing. If you ask a drummer, what is the drum about? That's what it's about, the heartbeat of Mother Earth and connecting us to our own rhythm, our own heartbeat. Yeah, so there is there is definitely something about um, these particular drums and the way that we, we drum and sing, though, that I will say to you, like, because I, I, have, I have a djembe, um, took a couple of little djembe workshops, and, you know, and I have had different percussion instruments and, and what have you, but, uh, and it, and it's, they all have their medicine. Every drum across Mother Earth has has its medicine, but um, but these ones here really I, I feel meant for us to be able to to feel just to feel what we feel and to be present with um, 
with our hearts and each other's heartbeats, really. And when you sit in a drumming circle, whatever kind of drum it is, actually, these ones, but any kind, there's that that kind of coming together as one. And in our circles, they talk about one voice. Like there's many, many voices singing, but we all there's a point and you'll hear it. You'll hear it when we all become one. When you're live in a drumming circle and you're singing together and drumming together, you'll hear it. And some people call it the sweet spot. And it's just this beautiful, like, oh, you're there. And it's like you're floating, but you're here in your body. And it's just so connecting. Um, and I know, like, it's time for drum to be here and in a bigger way because especially women, but people are being called to the drum. And yeah, mostly it's women being called to the drum these days. And that, and there's a reason for that, right? It's it's about that connection. And it connects us as a community too, because of those uh, coming together, you know, drumming with each other. So, and even if you're just drumming by yourself, there's so much connection that happens there. Yeah. It, it makes me think of Brenda, um, you know, um, co-regulating as well. Like uh, from a nervous system perspective, there's, you know, the access through our, our spiritual understanding, but there's also access through our physical understanding and, and the heartbeat is, you know, we, as babies, you know, we, when we co-sleep, it's how they co-regulate to, to sleep. And it's just a beautiful, that's what I love about uh, gatherings and theater and all the places where we're in connection with storytelling, we're actually co-regulating together and breathing and gasping at the same time as stories unfold. Yeah. I love that you talk about that because it's like that with um, there, there were, I, there's two things that are coming. Um, first thing that, that is just he keeps on popping in is um, when I opened for Greg Braden, he, he's like with heart math. I don't know if you're familiar with heart math. It's um, yeah. So some of you are, some of you aren't um, probably same with the audience. And the thing that he did, and you don't even have to know about that. The thing that he did was he has equipment to measure the heart um, coherence of the room. And so in the room, he had us all looking at pictures of babies and videos of cats or whatever, like stuff that would make you feel good. And then we, and he took us through sort of a, a bit of a connecting kind of meditation and then checked the coherence. And it was just like off the charts connected, right? Like we're all, we're all in synchronous, talk about synchronicity. We're all in synchronicity. Our hearts are literally talking to each other and connecting with each other, right? And that's, that's human capacity. That's what we have. And we can do that anytime. Yeah, it's pretty powerful. I don't know where the other thing I was going to say went, but whatever. <laughs> well, maybe it'll come back. I'm, we're just moving into our last sort of 15 yeah. minutes. So I'm just going yeah. to introduce or just welcome anyone who's just popped in at the at the at this point. Um, we're coming up to our last little bit. So if you're just finding us here, don't worry. You can you can rewind and watch the other part. Uh, here live on LinkedIn. You, this is a gather for her conversation, a co-created conversation with global leaders, change makers, and social impactors brought to you by Powerhouse and produced by Regen Media. Every two weeks we're here live here on LinkedIn. And we, then we follow up with a private interactive wisdom circle that you are more than invited to join in on, where we unpack and harvest the wisdom that opened up in this conversation. Our wisdom circles are held on the leader path, powerhouses community of practice for whole conscious leaders who are walking a bridged path of Western leadership practices and indigenous ways of knowing and being. Some of the things that happen in these conversations, we, we touch on what seven generational leadership. And what we want you to know is that requires a lot of us and it requires amplification. And at Powerhouse, that doesn't mean taking up more space or getting louder. At Powerhouse, it's talking about becoming stronger and wiser and more clear about the story of your change work and the social impact that you're up to in the world. Amplify is our 12-month storytelling leadership and global visibility program designed for leaders probably like you who if you're still on this still listening in something's tugging on your heart 
um, for those who feel ready to step into that kind of way of leading. Um, amplification on the inside as well as the outside isn't easy. You're hearing that in this conversation. It's embodying seven generational practices and being public with your message and story is an integration and it's worth it because it impacts all of our relations. So we just wanted you to know that if there's anything in this conversation that's kind of grabbing you, like I think I might be one of those leaders, I'm actually one of the person that you talk to about that. So put something in the chat, we'll reach out and, and chat about that. Um, but I want to come back to, and, and just enjoy these last beautiful minutes with Brenda McIntyre here on Gather for Her. And I'm going to toss to Sharon. I'm sure Sharon has something brewing in her heart on voice at this, at this moment. On voice. Well, <laughs> I actually just, um, because I, thanks Tina, um, because I, I, in the work that I do with Diva, I'm helping uh, Indigenous women find their voice. And so I feel that that is the, a um, synchronicity that you and I have, um, a similarity. And I'm just wondering, um, Brenda, uh, how, um, how, how you do that you do the same thing. You help women, you help people, women, Indigenous women find their voice. Um, and and um, yeah, if you could speak a little bit about that. Sure. Um, yeah, the, my work has evolved into something even deeper. <laughs> but it started on the path of um, helping women find their voice for, I don't know, over 20 years. And yeah, I developed uh, something that, again, going back to the drum and the voice, yeah, uh, using, using drumming and singing for that, because what I discovered was when I was doing my Sing Yourself Alive circles, which I still do for, like I do uh, workshops for organizations and uh, event planners. Uh, and so I still do that workshop uh, virtually right now. And when I, what I found was uh, it was just something different that was happening, right? That I, I would do my drumming circle and it was different than every time that, um, that I would go to another drumming circle or people would come tell me like I, that, that it's different. And I didn't really quite understand what was going on. So I started sort of doing field research um, to see like what's happening here. And realized that that's the literally they were singing themselves alive and uh one thing like and for example the, the the most powerful example of that is we were doing i think it was monthly maybe it was weekly i can't remember circles at native canadian center of toronto and uh i was co-facilitating with one of my drumming partners and this woman would come to the circle every single time, but never drum or sing. Or, or maybe she was drumming sometimes, but she wasn't singing. And that's okay, uh, because that's my circles allow that. I don't care. You can sit there and, and meditate or do what you need to do. Um, I never force people. But she would come, and 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 one day uh, she took the lead. Which, if you're in a drumming circle, you'll know what that means. But if you're not, you won't. And it's when you get to sing the first part of the song by yourself and then everyone follows you, right? And everyone gets that chance to do that, but you can pass if you want. And so every time she would pass, but every, this one time she sang, and I'm not kidding, every one of us just was like, what? Just came, because the voice that came out of her was like angelic. It was huge, powerful, and angelic and we all could not help but just stare at this like gorgeous being just pouring out song and as soon as she was finished doing that she just completely lost it in tears like just collapsed in tears and that was such a powerful beautiful moment because what happens is up here in our throat center which is our truth center all of those unspoken truths, all of those blocks from being told you don't have a voice, all of those blocks from being silenced as a woman, from silencing yourself maybe, all of that stuff just came tumbling out. And it's because she allowed herself to open her voice like that and sing. 
And when we do that with the drum, like we've been talking about, there's medicine there that isn't there without it, right? So she was able to find her voice in that moment. But then after that, yeah, you know, now, now the blockages are gone. So it doesn't all, that's dramatic. And that was, you know, it doesn't always happen that instantly. And, but it wasn't instantly, right? It's not like it was overnight. It took her months before she did that. Yeah. But then we all have that ability and it's just, these are, we hold our grief and trauma right up here in our throat center, also in our heart center and also in our belly. And that's why I have different kinds of breath work and, and work that we do around that, around all three of those centers, because they are all, all involved in, in finding your voice. Yeah. Thank you, Brenda. That's beautiful. I think, yeah, Christina, I think Christina was going to hop on before I did. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, that's, that's okay. I, 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 I think this comes back to what you said at the beginning. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with us. You don't need fixing. Just remember. And all the ways that we come back into the place of, of, of remembering. And to, to ground it in some practicality too, one of the things that I'm really taking away is the importance of part of remembering is paying attention to what you ingest physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, relationally, because, um, you know, when you were talking about the heart coherence, right, it was, it was brought on by images that elevate our soul and, and, and the things that, what are the things that elevate us? And nourish us and what are the things that poison us and this actually connects back to regen right media that's designed to heal and to elevate and regenerate and renew and renew and so you know for those listening what are you ingesting in all the all the different parts of you and is that is that healing or is it poisoning us so thank you for that, Brenda. So much here. Thank you. <laughs> well, and if I could add, um, um, not not all of us can sing or drum or are artistic in that way, you know, but that doesn't mean that we don't have, um, I mean, we all have a voice and we all have gifts to, to contribute to the betterment of society, to the betterment of our communities. And I think uh, Brenda is a, 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 an amazing example of, of realizing her, her gifts. Um, you, you've realized your gifts and, and you are just living. You're, you're living your gifts. And, and in that, pe you're healing. People are healing around you. It's a beautiful thing. And so for those of us, like you're, you're actually, without having to, like no one needs permission, but we almost do need permission to be that you know um when we see other people being themselves their whole selves it just it it opens the doors for others for to say okay if she can do that i can do that and and that to me is 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 um, what i'm taking away from this is that you know, I don't have the, the singing voice that you do. I, I wish I did. Um, my my way um, of of sharing my gifts and 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 um, helping others find their voice, where and me finding my voice is is different, but it, it's just as beautiful. So thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, there's so many ways to find your voice, for sure. Brenda, I know we're getting close to close, so I just want to thank you so much for sharing. I feel so full. Um, I'm taking away not only living as a ceremony, but but also what if we led and and how we how we lead, letting that be a practice and a ceremony. Um, 
and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to keep that with me, um, throughout the next week and coming weeks. So thank you so much for, for being here today. I'll jump in on that one. What I'm taking away is, um, stay, stay with it, Tina, stay with it. Keep softening that performer, please, you know, love her and know that she serves in certain times and trust that in between space. You're a beautiful teacher for me, Brenda. Thank you for modeling that for me. Hmm. Christina or Sharon, any, what are you taking away? I, I'm taking away that healing is remembering. Healing is remembering and we don't need fixing. We need remembering. So thank you. Thank you, Brenda. I'll pass it, pass it over to Sharon. Um, well, this conversation was, um, I'm still vibrating from it. Um, my, my, I guess my biggest takeaway is the heartbeat, you know, um, the, the heartbeat and the breath and how if we can remember, I think that would help us to remember. Hmm. Remember how to breathe. Remember the heartbeat. I think that'll help us to remember. Thank you, Brenda. And you, Brenda. Yeah, yeah. I um, I love that um, healing is remembering. And yeah, absolutely it is. Just to remember who we are as individuals and, you know, and as human beings um, on the planet and our role, we all have one. We all have a purpose. Um, yeah, and I, I'm just feeling too this, um, the importance of grounding, like that just keeps coming up mm -hmm. for me. And I know I said it a few times, but, and it's important in the work that I do as well, but it's because we, if we're in our bodies, then we can do so much more. Um, if people would feel what it really feels like, and I know it, it will feel awkward for some people who are not used to it to be fully in your body and listening and paying attention from there. But it's such an opening, incredible space to live in. And, and what you can, I don't know, receive, do, play with from that space is really something. So, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. You can learn more about Brenda McIntyre at medicinesongwoman.com, her work, her programs, her music, her art, all there. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining us on Gather for Her, our co-created conversation with global leaders, change makers, and social impactors. This conversation has been recorded and it is going to be shared on YouTube. Yay! So you can watch it again. <laughs> and also as a podcast uh, renamed as How for Her, which you can find on Spotify and all the other places that you find your podcasts. Gather for Her is hosted by Powerhouse, where we walk beside leaders to amplify their change work and integrate Indigenous ways of knowing and being on their path to whole leadership. So many, many, many thanks to our Impact Media producer and sister company, Regen Media, Charlene Sanjenko, who reminds us that we can take the power of media into our own hands when we support stories that heal, regenerate, uplift, and transform. Thank you to the hands at our back, Powerhouse and Regen's digital storytellers, Zoe Gray, Madeline Archibald, and Willow Smith. And thank you to my co-hosts and sisters in change, the braid of Powerhouse, Charlene, Christina, Sharon, and me, Tina Overbury. And to you, all of our listeners, our community of change makers, our leaders, and social impactors. Thank you for walking with us in co-creation of the world we are living into together. Reconciliation and action begins with awareness, followed by a practice, and then is carried forward within us as an integrated knowing. You're always welcome here each week on Gather for Her, and there's always a place for you at our fire in Powerhouse. Much love to all of you. Be well, and we'll see you next week in our wisdom circle where we can unpack these beautiful conversations. And thank you, Brenda. Thank you all. Mm -hmm.